Hola amigos, welcome back. So, in this video, I'll be presenting a step-by-step -step guide on two cases. First, we're going to find the expected value of returns, okay, for typical payoff matrix. And in, we're also going to do something known as the expected value of perfect information. Okay, so this is another big boy stuff. So, get ready. So, first I'm going to present a definition, okay, for both cases. So, the expected value of returns, what exactly is it in terms of uh, payoff matrix? This is simply, in my definition, the weighted average of all possible returns in each stock. So you have several stocks, you just want to calculate the, the expected return using the probabilities as weights. And in this case, we're going to define the expected value as the stock which generate the highest expected value. Okay, so we're doing a three stock example. So when you get calculate the expected value for, each, for the three stocks, our expected value will be the one which generates the highest return. So this would be the best decision. Now, the second case, expected value of perfect information. So what is the EVPI? Well, this actually measures how much better you could do on this decision if we actually knew in advance what position we'll be in if we're working under the state of nature. So in other words, we just want to yield the, the, the absolute highest payoff, you understand, in anything. So depending on what state of nature, if we knew in advance every single payoff, we would select the highest value in every case. And calculate its expected return and we'll subtract this against the the best possible scenario under each stock and this will give us evpi okay let's jump into example to understand this more deeply okay so now once again suppose you you're given a table of stocks and payoff based on the states of demand okay so look at the beautiful table on the right so we have this payoff table now consider each stock here so we go once again stock a a low was 100 in the, when the state of demand is in middle middle state, we have 140 and high 180 and so on, and likewise for B and C. So, how do we calculate the expected value for of returns for each stock? Well, let's look at stock A for example. Okay, so we're just going to work with uh, row A and probabilities. So to do this, we want to multiply for stock A 100 times 0.45 plus 140 times 0 0.25 plus 180 times 0 0.30 and this will give us the expected return of under stock A and this should yield 134 likewise for expected value the expected value under stock under stock B what we're going to do it's going to be once again 130 times 0 0.45 plus 145 plus at uh, times 0.25 plus 170 times 0.30 so same procedure and this should give us 145.75 let's do this in uh, under two decimal places okay just to keep it look just make it look consistent now finally we'll do the third one stock c so we're going to do once again 110 times 0 0.45 plus 130 times 0 0.25 plus 200 times 0 0.30 and this would give us a beautiful nice 142 and in this case this, in this case we want remember i stated that we want to calculate the highest expected value so in this case you can see that stock b the expected value of return under stock B yields 145.75 and this would be the highest EV. So this is the best decision. So boom, we choose stock B. Okay, so now let's shift on to the expected value of perfect information. Okay, so we're going to use the same table, but now we need to add a few information. So recall that I state that we need to find, we, we, sh we should choose um, the highest payoff under every single state of demand. Okay, so let's, let's have a look at this. So find EVPI. Let's let's look at um, low, the maximum payoff on the low. So the maximum payoff on the low under the three stocks, we can see that as stock, you can see that stock B generated 130, which is greater than stock A and stock C at the lowest state of demand. So that would be our best. Likewise, for middle, it would be 145 because it's larger than 140, 130. And under under high, it's not stock B anymore, stock C. And that would be 200. So that would be our next best payoff. And now we just calculate the expected value under the best decision. So this will just be 130 times 0 0.45 plus 145 times 0 0.25 plus 200 times 0 0.30. By the way, in mathematics terms, we don't say 0 0.45, 0 0.25. It's just, it's just easier to say this instead of saying 0.25. Anyway, ignoring that, this should yield us 154.75. And that's it, guys. Hope this helps. And oh, yeah. That's not it, sorry. Therefore, the EVPI, like I said, was the difference between the expected value at the best minus 
the um, the highest expected value of returns as and this and we we said it was stock B so it's gonna be one five four point seven five minus a hundred and forty five point seven five and this will give us nine okay guys that's it if you have any other further questions let me know and drop a comment and subscribe if you're enjoying these videos but yeah have a good day and enjoy the beautiful weather if whatever you're from if you're from another country then um, have a good day anyway <laughs> take care.